welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. And we're back. We're back. Welcome to like back. A, a very uh, unplanned hiatus. Hiatus, of right? like a month. Yeah. More. Holiday possibly. time. Yeah. I mean, we were supposed to record before the Christmas and then I got sick. Yeah. And then I continue being sick. Right. And then I went on holiday and I was still sick. Oh, very sick on holiday. Very sick. And then I got home and then I was well for like a week and we did manage to meet up for lunch. Yeah. And then we had these grand plans of recording twice in one week (laughs) and then I got sick. I also got sick. So, uh, sickness aplenty. Yes. Yes. Uh, But we're back and... uh, Healthy. (laughs) Healthy-ish. healthy enough. The fun part about our hiatus is that we read all of these holiday books. Yeah, and we promised you <laughs> cowboys about, for Christmas. Cowboy you read books? how many cowboy books? I, I feel like it was too we many. We went through, because you read a cowboy book that was three cowboy books in one. Yeah. That's and probably I, why it feels like a lot. I know. I started it. I'm like, I can't read this garbage. And you're like, I'm going to go through it. I can't yeah. ever not finish a book. And I'm like, DNF 10%. Like, I couldn't yeah. go through it. And I read garbage books. But that was so bad. So, unfortunately, we <laughs> we missed the holiday season to talk to yeah. you guys about Christmas books. And now it feels weird to talk about Christmas yeah, books in January. Yeah, save it. But I did find um, before Christmas, uh, but it was too late into December, but we, we have, we are going to read it like December this year. Yes. It's an advent calendar and of sexy looks stories. So, very sexy. And very bad. Very so, bad. It's going to be so, awful. Uh, instead of all the Christmas special you guys were going to get from us with all the cowboys <laughs> and Christmas and snow and horses and all the was, stuff that was in there. Yeah. There was a lot of snow and horses. Um, and then some of them were even just in the summertime. And it just ended at Christmas. It had yes, nothing this, to this do with Christmas. <laughs> uh, but instead of you hearing about us reading all these cowboy books, you're going to get the advent calendar yes. for Christmas next year. You're welcome year. in advance. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we're about like 11 months away. So, yeah, you know, start counting down. <laughs> But it's been a, I mean, I've started the year strong. I just went and looked at my Goodreads uh, challenge so far. I set myself a goal, I think, of 110 books this year. I go up slightly every year just to... to Even though you crush it. Even though I crush it it every year. But (laughs) I am at 11 books so far, so I'm definitely on the track. Okay. I think I'm at 13 books. Yeah. And uh, we are not even through January yet, so... (laughs) It, it is. We're, we're on track. Um, I mean, granted, it's a little bit misleading because I was reading these uh, scythe dumb books uh, that had been on our list for ages and ages and ages. And then I decided to read them over the holiday when I was in Canada and I had shingles and I was very sick. Um, and I finished the third one of them like New Year's Day. And I mean, I read like maybe three chapters on New Year's Day, okay, but it see. still counts towards yeah, this right. year. That's when you finished the book. That's when I finished the okay. book. So it counts towards my total for this year. Um, so it's a little bit misleading. But anyways, you were just telling me about uh, a throuple with no sex. <laughs> yeah, I ever listened to 16 hours. That's too many hours. Of a menage book where, okay, so usually in menage books, like I was telling Leah, uh, the men are also together as well as the female. And sometimes mm-hmm. in those books, the female seems to be unnecessary because it's a lot more about the men overcoming well, their bisexuality. That, right. But it yeah. is always about the men having to come overcome their bisexuality and the girl is like the helper. And mm-hmm. then afterwards, when the men fall in love, you're kind of like... Well, she's not needed anymore because now they can just get rid of her. You <laughs> yeah. don't need her anymore. Just go away. But in this book, the men are not together. Mm-hmm. And they're just both interested in her. So the entire first book is that it, uh, they're in a love triangle. So okay. she has to choose between one mm-hmm. of these two okay. men. But can I just slide in here and just say that 16 hours is approximately <laughs> six hours too many hours and i think we should start capping books at yeah. 10 hours max <laughs> i think so too because it's too much of a commitment and most of the time it's not worth it it's not worth it and we all know that all of the action is going to happen within the last you know 
25 to 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Um, so why have all the other fluff? Because that's what it is most of the time. It's just pointless. It really is. I learned way too much about Guillain-Barre syndrome that her father had that she had okay. to take care of him. And like that's not what I was there for. No. I was uh, there for the the thruple happening. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't happen. And the only thing that happened in all of these 16 hours is that she kisses one of them. One of them. Not even both. No, but you get a future glimpse of the fact that they... She had fooled around with both of them. But it's only like a, oh, well, I was there and I was also there. And a, like very weird man conversation. Um, but enough. that doesn't happen until the second book. So I did 16 hours and I'm like, I don't know. I can't do more of this. This is not right. And guess what I did? I listened to the second book because it was only 10 hours long. Oh, only. Oh, no, but I love, book, it. I love it when I start a book and I realize that it's like, I don't know. Six hours. Yeah, that's so nice. Oh, six I hours is so nice. Hour it's really nice. But I feel like I invested so much time in learning about these people. Who are yeah. like, okay, fine. But the second book, where I just finished before uh, on my way here, mm -hmm. it got crazy. Like, you just, you have no idea. Right now, in the first book, 16 hours, you learn that one of them is a nurse, one of them is a doctor, one of them is a private investigator, which we were just talking about is which overrated is in books. Overrepresented in yeah. books. Because I have, in my whole life, never, <laughs> never met, met anyone no. who's a private investigator. True. But in books, they seem to be a dime a dozen. Yeah, and he was a former cop, but it feels like that's... That's really overrepresentative also. Like, you're either a former cop or former something in the army. I feel and like... And then you're a PI. I also feel like former cop is not a common thing to be. I feel no. like people that are cops are cops until they retire. Retire. And then they're done being yeah. anything kind of professional They could be wise. consultants and things like that yeah, but, afterwards. But because not, you can retire pretty but early But as these people tend to be, what, like 35 and they're like, yeah, I'm a former cop. Like, yeah, I know. It's weird. And it's you're weird. like, what, you, you were like yeah. a traffic cop or no. it just wasn't for you? I don't know. Like, it's weird. It's overrepresented for sure. So we also learn in this first book that the men have a uh, like club that they had gone to, kink club. Mm -hmm. But the girl is has been is twenty two in school has been busy with her dad and like living on a farm and she is very innocent like so dumb. What are the names of these books so people can actually stay away? It's or, called you know, the choice. choice. The first book is okay. called the choice. And you know you are, I love I love triangle. So yeah. I was like oh the choice. She has to make a choice. Is she gonna choose? Or am I gonna guess? And she chooses both. She chooses both. Even better. <laughs> And the second one, it gets crazy. Like, I'm talking about, um, like, the past history of these guys comes forward. And one of them is from, like, a crazy cult family mm -hmm. that has, like, psycho people involved. And he, like, killed the leader and left and then made himself, like, a life on the streets, kind of, like... Like, he lived on the streets in Vegas, I mean, as one does, right? Because it's a desert. <laughs> yeah, so nice to live on the streets of Vegas. No, but then a prostitute. Have you been to Vegas? Yeah, I have a couple times. It's, I mean, I got married in Vegas, You right? did, yes. And and it's weird, like, as soon as you step off the strip, it's like a completely different place. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like a make-believe land, right? Yeah. You, like, leave the strip and you're like... Oh, so yeah. <laughs> this is like half of it is suburbia and half of it is just desert where there's nothing. Yeah. Other than the fact that you believe that all of the people have buried bodies there. <laughs> well, when I was there, uh, it was colder than it had been in like 20 years or something like that in Vegas, and it rained like oh, a lot. Which is like whoa. we came from we came from London and flew to Las Vegas, and it was colder and rainier in Vegas than it was in London, which was insane. That's awful. Yeah. That's bad luck. Yeah, Every time I mean, I was then, there. It, then he warmed up and he was like nice enough to, to use the pool and stuff like the last day we were there. But I've been there three times, mostly for I, bachelor. I mean, I got parties. I got married, so I could see home. my I could see my breath going no. from like the changing rooms into the church kind of thing. Like. Man. Yeah. Anyway, so now we're deep into this cult fight, mm -hmm. and they're like armed up. Oh yeah, so then a prostitute like raises him mm -hmm. and she becomes a madam and everything's kosher there. There's nothing weird. And she's like a really nice lady. And she um 
pays for his education and he goes to university and he becomes a doctor. So it's like success story from this cult life to like the street life to like a sketchy parent figure life and then so to he becomes successful. a doctor from from having lived on the street i mean that is that it's, is quite a right leap. I that's mean, a leap. medical school is not cheap but especially in no. the states like it's not but she's like a madam and she's like rolling in it with yeah, clients and all mm-hmm. the connections and stuff but so we went from like nothing happening in 16 hours to being like whoa this is my kind of book have you watched um there's a tv series that just came out that's called like paul t goldman or something like that no and it is the most bizarre thing I've seen in a while. It's basically this man who marries a woman and then he finds out that she's being unfaithful to him and then he discovers that she's a madam and that she runs this sex trafficking ring oh. and he writes a book about it and he self-publishes and now it's a TV show about making the movie of this yeah. life. But then throughout the whole thing, like it becomes more and more clear that he is very gullible and he's not very smart, this guy. Mm. So none of it is true. And he's just made like this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, but, and it is insane. But, oh. yeah, and he's like, she's this madam and they brought in these. And everyone's like, no, I mean, she cheated on this. It wasn't great. But you know, like, she's not a madam. And then he, he gets like a mail order bride from Russia. And they're like, isn't that kind of a form of human trafficking? Yeah. And he's like, no. <laughs> yes, I love her. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's, that it's sounds insane. funny and weird. It's insane. So, on the topic of Minaj books, you were fooled by TikTok and Fucking also... TikTok, man. <laughs> Seriously, I love TikTok. Don't get me wrong. But, but TikTok, when it comes to book recommendations, is very much hit or miss. And you need to know what you like yeah. in order to, to navigate what other people like. Like, TikTok keeps pushing Colleen Hoover for me. And I will never read... Uh, I've read Colleen Hoover. I hate Colleen Hoover. Yeah, I will not too. read it again. Me too. So... And they keep saying, oh, this is the best you have to read. And I'm like, mm, but I know this is not the best. So <laughs> stop telling me to read it. Like, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, but then this came up as like uh, the absolute best of like, uh, I guess, three, this like, struggle kind of uh, relationship Thrapple, thing. King, King, BS, and, um, yeah. and, and like v- being very steamy, these books. And it was like the American Queen. And you've read these books. Love them. And you love them. And there's three of them. And Honestly, I just, I finished the first one and I will not, I cannot, like, I'm not even remotely interested in going back and reading the second one. Yeah. Like, I found it to be, like, violent where it didn't need to be. I found it to be a very uh, groomy, very, um, mm. like, he grooms her into thinking that she wants this. And and it wasn't very consensual. Like, I, I did not like it. Did not like it. Mm. He's like the main guy they were like oh he's the best and I'm like he's fucking he's the fucking worst literally like (laughs) there's nothing redeeming about him like he groomed her and now he's like violently forcing her to to like he's literally fucking her throat to the point where her like like she's crying and she cannot breathe and he's like oh you're being so good and then I'm like what the fuck like no no that's not not your scene not with him because I mean I, I mean obviously they can be interesting submissive dominate like dominating uh, couples and relationships and and even sexual encounters that can be intriguing but this was just humiliation for the point for the sake of humiliation it was no care there was no actual affection there it was it was just. I will inflict as much pain on you as I feel like. You have a safe word, so you can back out. But I've also groomed you into thinking that you actually cannot say no to me. So I, you will not do it. You will not use it. And I will think that you're into this because I have groomed you to not say no to me. And then I will, will literally hurt you to the point where you are hurt, bruised and crying. And, and you will pretend, you will think in your mind because I groomed you that you like this. You know, there's this uh, part of the BDSM that's the sadism and masochism, right? Yeah. And within that, I feel the exact same way as what you're describing this relationship, even though this is more dominant, submissive relationship. But with no, but it was, sadism, it was sadism, it is masochistic. This relationship on top of being dominating and submissive, mm. like there's nothing like he enjoys inflicting pain on her. There's nothing 
nice about they don't have any encounters where he's even remotely kind to her oh. in a sexual situation like it is all about pain hmm. and it's all about ensuring that it hurts her as much as it possibly can and then her having to say thank you to him and call him sir it was disgusting like hmm. from front to freaking end like i don't remember it being so violent actually but i think like i said i remember more of the like the thr- the thruple of it all i don't remember where it was just him and her but even the thruple part like like the first encounter where there are all three of them yeah it is it is literally them getting to have sex with each other her being a vessel and inflicting as much pain on her as possible like she is hurting and they're like both holding her down so she won't buck so much because she's in so much fucking pain I do not remember Like, this was literally the the whole scene. I remember being so shocking that I had never read anything, or I audiobook listened to it, so I never listened to anything so out of, like, the box in this kind of, like, romantic relationship. And I think I, like, wrote that in my reviews, being like, this was shocking. Yep. I mean, it was shockingly bad. But I I didn't didn't feel, like, so negative towards it the way you do. But it's because I think, like, it was so out there that that's why I liked it. Yeah, no, I I just, I found that because of the grooming aspects and because of the fact that this girl, who's the main girl, is so fucking brainwashed by these two men that are so much older than her when they meet her. Like, she's 16, the first time they meet her and they are fully grooming her like the whole way through and even like her first sexual encounter which is what like five years later with one of the guys like it is violent the sex in there like he rips like at first when i read it and it was like all the blood on her thighs and i'm like how much does he fucking bleed and then you actually get the description of what's happening and yeah i'm not surprised because he like violently fucks her to the point where she's bleeding like a lot and it's like her first time and then it's like oh this is what sex is this is what it's like like this you should enjoy okay that's what you mean by grooming it's like yeah she knows nothing else she knows nothing these are the only two people she's even kissed Mm. like she has zero context to put this in she has no other experience and this and this is because of fucking merlin telling her to never kiss anyone (laughs) when she's seven years old and even that is is weird and like these older men telling her how to (laughs) be in her sexuality and how to be in her body no terrible so tiktok lied to you and then i was looking up other books that are similar not similar to this actually but just other romance books and the the one star reviews were all TikTok lied to me again. Yeah. And I was like, these are all from Leo. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It's it's all me. Uh, it's me high. But I mean we can talk about the star rating system because I, I have thought a lot about the rating system lately. Uh, because you never give practically ever anything below a three star. Right. I never do. And I am fairly generous with my one and two stars, um, as much as I'm restrictive with my five stars. Like, a lot of the books I I read will end up around a three star because it is passable. It's an okay book. Okay. It was nowhere exceptional. It was, you know, it's okay. If it's bad, it will go lower and it's going to have to be exceptional to go higher. Hmm. But I feel like we're not judging these books on the same scale in a way, even though we all have the same scale because we all do our internal judgment of it. And then, right. But it's personal opinion, right? For sure. Uh, but then I was talking to one of my coworkers and I was going to recommend a couple of books for her to read. So I went into my five star, like in Goodreads, like what have I given five stars to? And then I was scrolling through this list and I'm like, there are great books, but I'm like, this book was not as good as this one, but how come they're both five stars? You know, like, but they're in different genres. And at but the not time. even, like, so the same, they're in the same genre. They mm-hmm. just, and, and it's just so, I feel like there should be more metrics in how we, how there we. There should be more than just five stars. 
Yeah. Yeah. In a way, like, is this a five star for this kind of genre, or is this a five star book that everyone would love because it's five stars? Yeah. Is this, you know, like this? This I feel like this. This it's a lack of nuance in this one to five star, and especially if someone like you who only uses three of the five stars on top of that, then it's yeah. even less nuance. Right. But I actually like it when people will say give them four stars. And then in the review will be like three and a half, but not give it three stars because it's more than three. But yep. they like do these. So they, like you're saying, the scale is now larger because they make their own like increments, yeah. fractions, of, fractions, <laughs> fractions, fractions of a point. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I have been doing the same thing too. Like I'll give it four star and be like, this is more like three, seven, five. Mm-hmm. Because in my personal opinion, I didn't like, like when the character kept saying this over and over and over, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But that's my opinion. Like, I don't like it sometimes when, and it's funny because my husband swears a lot, so does my dad. But when a man swears so often in a book, it's like gick to me. Like, I don't like it at all. It makes me like feel like, but why? Why doesn't there need to be like a swear word? <laughs> I'm not like a fucking even evangelical. You just swear now when you said that. So clearly, we know you're not know. a fucking evangelical. No. But but and you know, so <laughs> I I don't mind swearing in everyday life. But when a male character is like fucking this and fuck that and fuck you and fucking asshole and fucking idiots, like I just think like I don't like that person. But I wonder if it's because it's written words, because I think in a way, when we speak, I I mean, I can swear quite a lot when I'm talking, but I wouldn't do it when I write. So um, I'm wondering if it's because we're reading something that's written and you're Mm. like, well, this person should have, they had time to write this. (laughs) They should have chosen different (laughs) Different words, words. you know, because we're, I mean, personally, I'm like that. I don't mind swearing in books. I like, I think swearing when it's like comical, like. Especially when the female characters will swear, uh, then I think it's funny. Yeah. But something about like a male character who swears often, it makes me feel anger from it. And then I'm like, this guy's an ass. Fair enough. But it's my own personal opinion, which is going to change from person to person. So I don't think necessarily that I need to take a star away because of one small little thing that I don't like. That happened a lot in the book, but doesn't make the book worse. No, no, for sure. And I mean, this is, I mean, personal opinion and all of that. You can rate however you want based on what you feel. Because if you are very sensitive to swearing, then maybe this is something that's going to be a big thing for me. Like, for me... uh, uh, Things tend to lose a star if it becomes too preachy, and that's on anything really. If it's very religious and it, it keeps preaching religious, or I read a book that was fairly good, but it was very very Jewish, and I don't like I have Jewish friends. I don't mm-hmm. you know like I don't care what religion you are, but when it's almost um, like trying to explain to me why Judaism is this or why Jewish people are this or why it's so special and so on and so forth. And it's not just like an offhand kind of, oh yeah, I'm Jewish. Oh, you're Jewish too. Great. So, you know, right. you baking in some Jewish holidays or whatever. It doesn't matter. But when it becomes preachy and it, it's mostly to do, I guess, with religious books, but also sometimes if it's uh, someone from a different culture, like, um, um, Sometimes when you read uh, black authors with the black main characters, mm. they can make a, a bit of a too much of a point of, of like, this is yeah, this seen. is the blackness and this is very important for this culture. And, I'm, and I understand, I mean, you have the platform, you want to talk about it. Yeah. But just there's a point where it tips over to being just a little bit too preachy. Right. It can be about vegans. I don't know. It yeah. can be about CrossFit. Yeah. It can be yeah. about, about anything. Um, but when it goes too too much into it, uh, on too many places, where it's like, this would not be a normal conversation that people would be having. like, And that's personal preference also. Yeah, for sure. And that brings us to, like, why we brought this conversation up was because there is an author who was, like, quite angry about people giving less than four stars to any book, saying yeah. that in order for a book to be published and, like, worldwide this going to be on a level that shouldn't ever be under four stars. But then when you bring personal opinion into it, of course, maybe you don't like this. Maybe you don't like 
swearing. Maybe you don't like preaching, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make the book less good of a book. So she thinks that there should never be anything less than four stars. Yep. And basically what she was saying in this post was that it stops people from picking up your book when they go in to say Goodreads and they see that it's, you know, um, less than four stars or less than five stars, then people might not pick it up because they will be like, oh, this book is not good. But it might just be that this book was not the cup of tea of the people that read it and gave it a lower rating. Which is fair, which is true, but I also find that I like the ratings and I like the reviews because if I'm on the fence about a book, I will go into Goodreads and I will read a couple of five-star reviews and I will read a couple of one-star reviews just to give myself an idea of what is this book going to be and people that have read it, what do they say? Why did they not like it or why did they love it? And this will give me an idea to be able to gauge is this book actually for me? Because just looking on star rating, at the end of the day, it means nothing. Colleen Hoover has freaking almost five star reviews, like thousands and thousands, and I fucking hate her. So it means nothing. And I mean, uh, Grace books that we spent weeks talking shit about, Gargoyles and whatnot, they're also um, like a million five star reviews, and those books are not good. So I don't think... um, if we're going to rate every book at four or five stars, it will be even more impossible for us to actually be able to identify the books that we might actually like at the end of the day. But I did read a book that came up on TikTok. Mm-mm. And it was not something that I think we would have read normally. It's called um, Once, Once There Were Wolves okay, by Charlotte McConaughey. Mm-hmm. And this book was fan fucking tastic. Like mm. it was so amazing. I cried. No. I was like invested. And it's about this woman. She's like a twin, and it jumps a bit in time. But she's with her twin sister, and she works as uh, she has a doctorate, and she works with wolves. So they're trying to do this project of replanting wolves into the Scottish Highlands. And okay. it's like they just get there and they have the wolves with them. And the people that live there, they're against this. Like they're like, what about a sheep? What about a livestock? This is a yeah. danger to us. We don't want the wolves here. Like, yeah. But they used to be there, but they were hunted uh, relentlessly until there were no more wolves in the Scottish okay. Highlands. And now they're re- reintroducing them because wolves are good for the environment. So basically what they're saying is that wolves keep prey moving. So the deer cannot eat all of the shoots on all the trees. So they right. actually promote healthier growth of of plants and forests and so sure. like it is like super good for the environment and, and you need a healthy ecosystem in the forest. You can't just have uh, like herbivores because then it gets eaten you up. you have no new growth in the yeah. forest. Um, but it's like, and this story, and there's also like a murder mystery in there and it is just so good. Cool. And yeah, so if you, if you want something that's completely outside of what you normally (laughs) read, you should read Once There Were Wolves uh, by Charlotte McConaughey because it was fantastic. Cool. Yeah. What are you currently reading? I mean, you're... I just finished that. Oh, I'm currently reading a book that we are all reading together. Oh, yeah, actually. the serpents and the wings of night. <laughs> the serpents and the wings of night. And uh, I don't like this title. Yeah, it's too long. I don't like it's a vampire book. I don't like vampires. I'm over vampires. I've realized this. Like You're... vampires were like 15 years ago. I'm done with fuck? vampires now. No. Yeah. I like all supernaturals. I think that I probably read. Le- like less about werewolves than I do about all the other supernaturals. We've heard so much about werewolves there for a bit when we were reading like about like the Magusty Waters, the, yes. the wolves of the yeah. The but I like don't generate towards that as no. often as I like magic and witches and vampires and fairies and elves. I love all of those. But um, why not vampires? Why don't you like vampires? I don't know. I just... I find that it's... I don't... I think I don't connect with it anymore. Like, back before when I was younger, I used to be like, oh, it's cool, like, live forever, immortality, and now I'm like, fuck, that seems like a very long time to live for stuff. I'm already tired. Um, And just the drinking of blood, it's like... 
I have so many issues with the drinking of blood, like the whole. <laughs> no, but like we've we've talked about this before. <laughs> Let me get it ready here. <laughs> Ranting time. <laughs> no, but it's like, how much bloody body, how much blood does a normal human body contain? It's like, what, four or five liters? One on that? It's a little bit more than five liters, yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Have you ever in your life been able to drink five liters of <laughs> anything in one sitting? Are you trying to talk about when they drain them to death? Every vampire book I read, they can drain one, two, three, four people in a fucking row. No problem. No. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll drain you too. And then we have our plucky little heroine who's going to stand up to them and make them stop. But they're vampires. Reason. They don't have, like, human capacity. It doesn't matter. Have you ever drunk five liters of anything in one sitting? No, you'd puke. But exactly. they're not human. Then, I, am, I understand okay. that they're not human. Okay. But imagine then if you're drinking 20 liters of something, <laughs> you've just drained four people in this bloodbath, you gorged yourself, like you'd not be fucking able to move because you'd be so swollen. bloated and swollen. We're just not like, human. I understand the that, but even, here, even you're being how too do picky they about it, you shit in their bodies? <laughs> Where do they fit it then? Okay, they're not human. They, the blood goes they in have no in blood their... in their body, so the blood so then the first five replenishes whatever yep. they were missing. Five, right? yeah. But then the other fifty, <laughs> where does that go? All different parts. Why does it matter to you? <laughs> but, it annoys me. Yeah, but those small things you need to let like, go. <laughs> no, this is this is seriously bugging me. This. Where does the blood go when they drain people? I think it's more interesting on the opposite side. Like when the person that's like the non-vampire lets them drink from them. But then it's fine to like walk out because I've given blood for the majority of my life before I had kids, mm -hmm. like every 57 days. And then you give like a liter. Yeah. And after that, you are high as fuck. Like you are woozy. Like you shouldn't drive a car. Like you need to eat. You need to get your blood sugar back. Like you can't walk down the street without maybe tripping. Like you're not in the right frame of mind when you lose a liter of blood. Yeah. And then when I gave birth to Raven, as we know, I lost two and a half liters of blood. Mm -hmm. And I passed out. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I couldn't even stay conscious having lost that much blood. So when a girl in a vampire book is like, drink from me. <laughs> yeah, you were like, you'll be tripping on yeah. the street and you'll be woozy. And but no, then they get up and they could fight whoever's about to come. They run. They do fucking yeah. like... This is what I'm saying. It's illogical. There's too That's much illogical. illogical shit in vampire lore. And the, the well, whole... When it comes to fantasy books, that is what it is. It's all illogical. Yeah, yes and no. But I mean, I think it comes with... Um, the only vampire book that I still love, 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 is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. I don't think you've read it yet. No, I haven't. And it is a Holly Black one. And yeah. Holly Black is the queen of fairies and elves, right? Mm -hmm. And she's only written one book about vampires, and it's this one. Yeah. And it's basically her take on it. And I love this book. I do. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and I think, I think that's uh, because Holly Black, as an author sticks to the fucking rules all the time <laughs> like she makes so many rules for things but she yeah. will stick to it yeah. like she will stick to fairy lore like all the way through if there's a rule for fairies they cannot lie they cannot fucking lie in her books right. it's not like oh but i'm the exception like every other fucking author that you know gonna write about this thing and is like I don't But mind I need it. my I need my characters to be the exception. I need my characters to be the strongest and the bestest and the differentest of all the differentest. Oh, know? I see what you mean. Whereas in in uh, Holly Black's book, they're just humans are human, they're not special. Okay. Then you know, and yeah. the monsters, they are referred to as monsters as well. Like okay. they are not I mean, they are romanticized in the same way that we fucking romanticize. Like, in the uh, coldest girl in Cold Town, basically, vampires become known to the world. And if you're infected, you need to go to the Cold Town. And it's basically a quarantine zone where the vampires live. 
and they live stream their parties and like people are fascinated with them in the same sense that if we had freaking serial killers being able to live stream themselves they'd have like millions of viewers and like why did you do it yeah you know i'd watch that kind of thing um i don't think i would actually watch that but but there's enough people that would watch you know these kind of things like as like we uh, as humanity are fascinated with the like macabre and uh, the different right. and all of that so i i i mean, i don't know i think in this one there's wings that can be magicked off there's wings that are look different depending on which family you belong to cool. there's born vampires there's yes. made ones yes. there's there's gods there's a tournament i don't know like i'm already I glad love it. <laughs> i love tournaments so much i love tournaments yeah i don't know man <laughs> <laughs> well we will talk more about this book For on sure. our next podcast where leah can rant about how much she hates all of the things and i will just laugh at it as always sounds like a plan thanks for listening right. thank you bye, bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.